Hey guys, welcome to game four. Dreamer thus far has been swept. And I'm hoping he can pull out this match and wake up. Because honestly, I don't feel like he's playing up to his potential. Bottom right hand corner, he's starting as the green Protoss. This is Shakur's Plateau. Bottom left hand corner, we have Zeddy as the red Zerg. But thus far, Zeddy has just been dominating. Last match, I thought Dreamer had done enough early scouting, enough economic damage that Dreamer was going to be able to pull into that mid-economic position and perhaps win. But unfortunately, Dreamer building a lot of High Templar and not getting Psystorm in time. And I, I have to hand it to Zeddy here. Zeddy saw those storms not, not being fired off. He was trying to bait storms out. And when those storms did not land, he saw the opportunity for a killing blow and took it. Pylon warped in. Probe making its way across. It looks like we are, in fact, going to see at least some sort of Overlord first build. It is possible we'll have an overpool here from Zeddy. His Overlord scout is moving to the upper left-hand corner initially. Upon seeing this probe in, he might adjust a drone or maybe even address, uh, adjust the... It's, it's possible you get cr cross-map scouting, but oftentimes when you see this probe as an indicator, it's like, okay, we got a nearby base at the bottom right usually. So we'll see if a, probe, if a drone scout moves out for that purpose. Seeing that it is a 12 hatch attempt, Dreamer going to go ahead and finally have an opportunity to do some harassment. Zeddy realizing, okay, I'm just going to open for the 973, skipping any sort of push at that natural expansion. Instead, going to go ahead and meander up to this 9 o'clock base and take that instead. I feel like this, I believe on Shakur's Plateau, this is a little bit less mineral efficient than the natural expansion. But it does have a gas, allowing Zerg to get three, three gas. Dreamer knows he can just open Nexus first. And the question now is, is does he follow up with a forge or is he going to get aggressive with the gateway and produce additional zealots to deal with this? The spawning pool has plopped down for Zeddy. I think the... You can see that Dreamer really wants to do that harassment on those hatcheries and Zeddy's just been denying it over and over again. He actually hasn't pulled off the drone to even sneak up the 9 o'clock. Drone actually blocking the ramp a little bit. Kind of interesting from Zeddy. It's like poised. It's like a stare down between the probe and the drone. Am I going to be able to take this hatchery? Kind of odd that he uh, decided to place it. Perhaps just wanting to deny the scout. We'll see if he just produces his initials. It's going for a forge and a gateway on the opposite corner. Now the fight begins. Usually probes win this fight. Second drone coming out. Two drones to go ahead and try to push this back. This is going to slow down that hatchery and create a little bit of delays of minerals. We see there was a cancellation there. Zeddy wants to try to build this hatchery with that damaged drone to get a little bit of something out. Probe taking uh, initial damage. It can't really take another hit. Peeling off. That is going to allow Zeddy to go ahead and get that additional hatchery down, but that delayed it for a good period of time. The Zerglings might have less work they need to do and actually might be able to even get the kill right here. At least ushering that probe back, getting some initial damage. Cannon warping in. At Dreamer's front, he's not really under threat from these four Zerglings. This probe might want to go ahead and swing around. Actually, two Zerglings have already been produced here. And check out where the location of the additional base. Sometimes Protoss players like confirming that information. Cybernetic score warping in. Near that natural expansion, the Overlord is in fact going to spot it. One advantage here. Dreamer actually pulling off probes a little bit unnecessarily here. You can see he's very nervous about Zeddy's ability to, get to, to push this. Once he sees additional Zerglings starting to flood across, because Zeddy, it looks like he does want to do run-by, is angling his Zerglings to the north to do so, because this is an unpassable gap. I think there was... I missed the probe getting killed. This, this Zergling is the hero who got the probe kill. So, we've got nine drones here. Only one drone thus far here. We'll see if that pushes up. We are seeing a fourth hatchery already at the... 9 o'clock location, so these Zerglings mostly there to provide some defense. Stargate actually warping in at the natural expansion as well, so Dreamer hiding a lot of his tech away from an Overlord scout that might have to dive in pretty far into the main. He is grabbing a second assimilator, so he does in fact want to opt for earlier tech faster. And this is a large grouping of Zerglings starting to press up. Probes should pull off the line. This is two cannons, but they need to make sure the Zerglings stay on their side of the forge gateway wall. Several Zerglings dying for nothing. 
Level 1 weapons now upgrading as well. And no push to layer just yet. It looks like this is going to be 4 hatch, but it's probably going to be a ship to 5 hatch Hydra. And this is kind of the... I think this was the build we saw previously from Zeti as far as some adjustments and things. And this is what I want to say. It wasn't exactly 973-ish, but he does still have an opportunity off these 4 hatcheries and a potential 5th down the line to go ahead and be aggressive and go for a Hydralis Contain, uh, try to pin his Protoss opponent into two bases. Oftentimes what you can transition into is his Lair, Lurkers, out on the front, Citadel of Dune, warping in for Dreamer. He does have that initial Corsair. This Overlord trying to flee. Usually he wants... And here's the thing, Dreamer has been playing a little bit greedy in the aspect where he's been engaging these Corsairs on these Overlords out in the front and hasn't been checking the tech that his opponent's been fielding. In this instance, Zeddy's going to wander in with the Hydralisk, so he knows that it's going to be Hydra tech overall. He might just have a good sense of it based on scouting information and patterns. Maybe just uh, game sense. Hashtag. Hydralisk speed being upgraded. So he's going to be, it looks like, 4-hatch Hydra, which I honestly have not seen as like a pure actual build thus far. Level 1 weapons should be there in plenty of time. Seeing those Hydralisks on the ground and knowing... The result of the previous three matches, honestly, two of those matches, the Hydralisks being the heroes of the match, both directions, some cannons warping in, and we do see a Dark Templar being warped in as well. Another Overlord a bit exposed. These Hydralisks should be able to engage that Corsair. Dreamer doing a good job of going ahead and backing it up. Has supply capped himself a little bit here. It's not going to cost him, though, because he's still warping in a lot of cannons. Now, remembering Psystorm. And there is an Overlord nearby. Here's the thing, though. Where's that Dark Templar? I lost track of the Dark Templar. There he is. <laughs> I can't lose track of this guy. The Invisible Men. Zergling's pressing up. Ooh, getting uh, groups around and damaged. Now, is Dreamer going to move that out and try to do some scouting information? It looks like a Corsair. Let me see if I can find the Hydralisk that did the Corsair. There's, there he is. There's the hero. Kill it. I'm got that Corsair, the natural expansion. Now the Hydra's starting to flood out. I do not believe for a bust in this situation. I believe this is just to, again, press towards that contain. Although I said that last match, and it still ended up being bust. High Templar are going to have Psy Storm and energy to commit a Psy Storm in a handful of seconds. But the Hydra is already pushing in. One cannon down. The Zelt starting to press out. Two cannons down. A Zealot trying to pull the Hydralisks away. Not able to do so. They are on hold position. A great Psy Storm initially for Zeddy. Thinning out the herd. Level 2 weapons being upgraded. That's very brave. Might want a cancellation on that. As this front is being assaulted. A Dark Templar making his way to the natural expansion. But getting blockaded. Is able to kill a drone. Before it's able to perhaps get another hatchery. That's going to provide at least some form of distraction. There are Hydralisks and other things to go ahead and engage that. One gateway down on the front. In the meantime, in the back, we do have three gateways to continue to produce units and a lot of High Templar. Cancellation of additional weapons and another great Psy Storm as Zeddy kind of getting caught with his, his pants down. I don't think that, High Temp that Dark Templar in the main really got anything else accomplished. Fifth hatchery finally at the natural expansion. Thus far, Dreamer ahead in supply for the first time, I think, in most of these matches. Those Psy Storms were beautiful. Zeddy really getting caught off guard. An additional gateway. And two forges going to try to maintain that weapons upgrade advantage here in the background. Zealots making way there across. Here's something critical, though, is these are slow Zealots. Speed was not upgraded from Dreamer. So it seems like, okay, game... The previous match, he remembered to get Zealot Leg Speed, but skipped Psy Storm. This time, I think he ended up forgetting Zealot Leg Speed, and that actually might be critical. And this is kind of the problem for Protoss these days against the 973 builds, is you... You miss something critical like that, and your opponent can just start walking away with the match. Two additional hatcheries and a creep colony. It's part of a SimCity here at the Natural Expansion. More Psy Storm and an Archon clearing out the rest of the Hydralisks. And one thing for Dreamer, though, is, is he's thinned the herd well enough that he can go ahead and perhaps meander out with a probe and with this attack force and maybe even take an additional base. Layer is up. Lurker Aspect is being upgraded. He's going to need it. Three more gateways plopping down. A photon cannon in the main, just in case there was a Hydralis tech switch. 
not perhaps not feeling confident in doing so. Robotics facility on the front, perhaps to do a reaver follow up, or perhaps just to get observers to deal with eventual lurkers. So Dreamer not capitalizing a bit, perhaps because he's still in the dark and just didn't have that Corsair scout, didn't have the Dark Templar moving around to essentially know what's going on. Evolution Chamber and a Spire being plopped down for Zeddy. And in the meantime, a lot of Dragoons filling out the rest of Dreamer's army. He is well ahead in supply, has a lot of Sidestorm stored up with these High Templars, getting range upgrades, so I think he wants to get aggressive as a follow-up. There is a single Zergling sitting at that 3 o'clock base. He has to, I believe that's going to be an indicator to Zeddy overall, that as I'm leaving this front forward, my opponent is thinking about getting aggressive. Will he have enough Hydralisks and enough defenses up once Dreamer comes? Dreamer will have the upgrade advantage. We have no upgrades currently. Level 1 weapons is online for Dreamer, and level 2 weapons and level 1 armor will be online when he starts pressing out. This will be the indicator is when this observer is produced, does Dreamer immediately move out from there? Phenomenized Carapace being upgraded. Spire's just about finished. Some Lurkers being morphed on the front. But this is enough Dragoons, honestly, and enough Psystorm to perhaps deal with this. Dreamer starting to press out. He is going to go for a Nexus. Might want to leave a single Zealot as he's pressing this. He's walking up towards the upper 9 o'clock base to go ahead and deny something past 3. Zealot getting a little bit overambitious. A lot of Lurkers on the defense here. They're going to ransack these Zealots. Oh, these Zealots taking a lot of free damage before they're able to group up. At the very least, Dreamer has some map control here. He's got a big marauding army that Zeddy has to worry about. Hydralisks is getting a little overambitious, and they're going to pay for it with their lives. Two Hydralisks making, out to the, making their way to the 9 o'clock location. There is a Dragoon to deal with this. I believe with level 2 weapons and both of these Hydralisks being damaged, this Dragoon should be able to take, handle this Yeah, without much trouble. Zeddy trying to put up a defense at the 9 o'clock base. The Zelts getting right on top of the Creep Colonies, but those Lurkers are going to work. Good side storm across the Zealots as well. That's going to clear them out, but the Lurkers are gone. More Lurkers trying to push up. They are running in to the Dragoons and the Archon there. And beautiful side storm coating everything. All the Creep Colonies down. Unfortunately, it is just, just Dragoons. I think Zeddy might have actually done the perfect defense here. We'll see. The Dragoons having to deal with the Zerglings and trying to stutter step their way back. Are reinforcements going to make their way across? Some Hydralisks that were, it looks like, at the 11 o'clock position are starting to make their way across to try to provide some defense. Zeddy pouring on the pressure, looking for another side storm That should be able to deal with these Hydralisks to the north if Dreamer's on top of it. Does manage to get a side storm off, catches his second High Templar with that, and it looks like the rest of this attack army is going to be cleaned up. Some reinforcements not there in time. So Dreamer does get an additional base, however, is not able to crack that 9 o'clock location. Is back to even in supply, which usually favors the Zerg. Does have the upgrade advantage, is able to establish his 3 o'clock base in the midst of all of this, however. Another evolution chamber going down. So Zeddy, perhaps thinking he's going to play this in more of a long-term, pure... Mixed army. So, long time Lurker Ling. In the meantime, we have eight, nine gateways and double forge upgrades for Dreamer. Dreamer piling up at the nine o'clock location and going ahead and establishing the rest of his economy. Pushing ahead overall in supply. One critical thing that I think is lacking at this stage is the observers. You can't apply a lot of... And I don't see... There's the observers starting to be additionally built. Might want to pump those observers out. This is also a threatening situation. Because it looks like drop is being upgraded. For Zeddy. And this is a large drop area. There are two cannons in the main to try to provide some defense there. Zerglings and gonna be able to catch this probe that was meandering out to that upper right hand base. I think hopefully trying to sneak an expansion. 11 o'clock base. Zeddy's going to grab a base, uh, an expansion there. 
So both players moving into more of a long-term macro space. It looks like, yeah, we're going to see some more Zergling, Zergling Lurker Ling action. So we see the full upgrade press. In the meantime, level three weapons. Basically, I feel like Dreamer's going to maintain that weapons upgrade for a considerable period of time. A huge grouping, a full control group of Zerglings trying to deny that base in the upright in corner. But Dreamer going to go ahead and sneak this expansion at the 2 o'clock base. Dreamer pushing towards 200 supply. Neither, I don't feel like either player really has map control. 9 o'clock base being grabbed. So we got three bases currently. Versus what is three base Protoss. However, given enough time, there are two additional bases that could be saturated. To allow Zeddy to maintain the one base advantage, which is where you want to be as Zerg. But. Overlords with a massive drop making their way into the main. All sorts of lurkers there. There is a High Templar. Does not have enough energy for a Psy Storm. Just obliterating, it, obliterating everything. There is detection. Never mind, the Observer's not there. Dreamer pulling out. Zealots trying to flood through, but the Zealots are not going to do that great against these Lurkers. And critically, you might end up losing this Forge upgrade. Finally, the Observer is regaging, but a lot of damage done. Nice Psy Storms. The big critical comp component was the delay of Weapons 3, which is going to allow... A regathering of weapons. Some Zerglings trying to surge in and take out that additional base. Not getting a lot accomplished. They are able to take out that Nexus. Not a lot of minerals left there. So not exactly a, a huge victory. But the big story here is that... Oh, I take it back. All sorts of Lurkers burrowing for Zeddy. Beautiful Psy Storm. Going to obliterate a lot of them. Is there another Psy Storm there? No cannons left. So it looks like Dreamer's going to end up losing his main... And the 2 o'clock position, so Zeddy striking and doing all sorts of damage as a follow-up. And Dreamer still hasn't responded, just some Dragoons wandering up to deal with these Zerglings, which is not what he wanted. And with the threat of drop, Zeddy is more or less playing this almost like a Protoss versus Terran, where he can go ahead, he's threatening drop at the main with some Zerglings. And taking out additional bases, and in the meantime, he's gone up. Has saturated this base in the upper left-hand corner. Not yet saturated, but does have drones waiting to go ahead and deal with that pure 9. Two lurkers trying to drop over this back corner. I think that... Well, we'll see. One lurker down. Is he going to get any probe kills out of this? No. Able to at least be annoying, though. Zeddy briefly in the red. All sorts of cannons up there for Dreamer. And more attack forces moving out for Zeddy. Zeddy feeling like my economy's been established. I've got the 53 drones I want. I've got all sorts of gas. Let's do this. Dreamer mostly being silent on his front thus far. Trying to get his Nexus back up. Leaving a huge Dragoon Force to deal with drops potentially at his main. Trying to protect his 3 o'clock base. But while he's doing this, he's sitting 3 bases to 5. And will end up losing a long-term economic game. More Zerglings moving in just as the Dragoons had peeled out. Good size storms as that's all being dropped. This should be fairly easily cleaned up. But simultaneously an attack going in at the 3 o'clock base. Good size storms catching a lot of the Hydralisks <clears throat> and Lurkers before they're able to even burrow. So beautiful defense from Dreamer. <clears throat> and he's maintaining a lot of his army in the follow-up. He's gonna, in fact, feeling so confident. He's just going to plop down this Nexus in the midst of some of these Zerglings. Cleaning out everything here. The Zerglings might force a cancellation of this Nexus. But Dreamer, all of a sudden, up 20 supply, might have some map control. Does need to... Okay, finally the Zealots make their way down there. And able to clean out a lot of the Zerglings in between. So Dreamer finding some breathing room is trying to establish his fourth base. Keep in mind, this is just getting him back to even. And this is what's dangerous. Hive has been upgraded in the meantime. This is textbook Zeddy. Do the attacks while you're getting tech and establishing your economy. Adrenal upgrade is the real scary one. We'll see also. One thing for Zeddy is I feel like he'll oftentimes get the adrenal upgrades. He really could get some huge benefit out of Defilers. And it feels like he, he waits to get the Defilers out for a huge period of time. This is a very Dragoon-heavy army. Adrenal Zerglings do pretty well against Zealot's late game. But that plus Swarm really can crack 
things at like the three o'clock and here at the six o'clock and overlord dropping two more lurkers here before the cannons were warped in might be able to do some disruption no detection this is that this was the concern i had earlier with the lack of observers observers now moving in that's i take it back four observers there it's a good job dreamer making me look silly lurker very quickly taken out this nexus has taken a pounding but it still stands and dreamer moving across is going to catch some reinforcements as they're moving across to potentially do an attack yeah these zerglings Ooh, High Templar might get caught midfield, turning around. Here's the other thing with those Adrenal upgraded Zerglings. They really rapidly take down High Templar. But the Lurkers, the Zerglings, every almost everything else getting taken out. Zeddy going ahead and grabbing this upper left hand base. We have a match, ladies and gentlemen. Huge amounts of Zealots and everything else streaming across. Moving across towards that 9 o'clock base. Looks like they want to do an attack. Unfortunately, the Zealots leading in. The Lurkers clearing them out. The Psystorm now there, blanketing a lot of those Lurkers. But I believe the damage is done. And reinforcements sweeping in from behind. Lurkers looking like they might be able to pin on top of this Dragoon line. There is an Observer right there, but the Zergling's flooding in as well. So nice defense from Zeddy. Now Zeddy having the turnaround supply lead. As Dreamer getting a little bit over-aggressive. And losing his army as a result. Trying to turn around with some side storms. Yeah, loses everything. So now, Zeddy, I honestly, I'm going to give Zeddy a strong lead here. He's pinned basically just two mining bases now for Dreamers. Natural expansion is expended. His main is expended. The natural expansion is thin, but still operational. But you've got four other bases that are available and a fifth base being taken right now for Zeddy. So he can just go straight Sauron Zerg and just start overwhelming everything. Zergling sneaking in from behind. Dreamer able to clean this attack force up, but the question is, is for how long? I don't know that he can keep up the production. It, he needs to establish an additional base. Otherwise, he's just going to end up getting overwhelmed in a minute or two. Archon warping in to try to deal with these Zerglings and potential Ultralisks. That could have been a problem, although I don't think an Ultralisk den is down yet for Zeddy. And at this stage, you know, I say, hey, Defiler Den, he doesn't need it. Another drop being grouped up with these Zerglings. Keep in mind, with that Adrenal Upgrade, they are super scary. This is a fair amount of cannons and a High Templar with full energy. But right now, Zeddy looking terrifying. All he has to do is macro up, keep up the pressure, and make sure that Dreamer can't get an additional base. A Psy Storm over the Overlords. There as well... Some observers sneaking in. It looks like just narrowly missing some Psy Storm. But all the cannons wiped out. That's how fast Adrenal Upgrade Zerglings take out cannons. The Zealots trying to move in. Psy Storm. All of the probes are dead. And so now Dreamer is down to a single mining base at that 3 o'clock location. He is just getting economically devastated. More Zerglings flooding in. Zeddy keeping that pressure up. And even these Zerglings just do not care about these Archons. Just wiping them out. Psystorm, Dreamer desperately trying to hold on to the 6 o'clock base. This might be the final blow. And honestly, we're looking at a sweep here. In this best of seven, Zeddy winning four straight. Probes pushing in. They're going to try to be part of this fight. He knows he needs to mine something to stay in this match. He's down to 30 probes overall. The Nexus is down. And I believe that is the nail in the coffin. Dreamer still might fight this out. Nope, that's going to GG right there. Well played. Congratulations to Zeddy. BSL Season 12 champion. And Dreamer, we'll have to see him next season. But that's two semifinals, or that's two finals in a row. Where he's taken second place. Unfortunate. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like, despite the fact that it was quick Zeddy wins, they were fun matches. Congratulations to Zeddy, our Zerg champion for this season in Hasu League. Now we get to go to the fun stuff. Moving on to Chobo League. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.